Okay, it's a quiet time of the year. Make sure you make the most of it. We have a couple weeks in here where there are not many people coming. So try to accelerate your efforts. That's the word they use in the Thai. Rain. Sit more. Talk less. It's like those bumper stickers that say, wag more, <coughs> wag more and bark less. And do your best to make sure that this is a good time not only for you, but also for the people around you. In other words, make sure that your treatment of other people is going to be conducive to their practice, too. When you speak to another, make sure it's something that's necessary. We don't need a lot of idle chatter around here. Connect with the Dharma, connect with the goal. Remember that silence is gold, and if you're going to break silence, you have to have something better than gold to offer. So this is an opportunity to apply appropriate attention to what you're doing and also to make yourself an admirable friend for the other people who are trying to apply appropriate attention in their practice as well. In this way, having a monastery is a benefit, not a, not a burden. We hear about all the Ajans who gained awakening out in the forest, but you have to remember there are a lot of Ajans who gained awakening in forest monasteries. There's the tradition that Ajahn Sawat gained full awakening right here in, in Metta. So it's possible. What makes the difference but between getting nowhere and getting somewhere is how you apply yourself, bringing appropriate attention to what's going on in your mind, and seeing where there's stress, what can, we do, <clears throat> what can be done to put an end to that stress. Particularly see where you're adding unnecessary stuff. Try to strip things down, keep things simple. Because the mind is complex enough as it is. We don't make, need to make things more complex for ourselves or the people around us. This really is an auspicious place, so make something auspicious happen in your mind to go along with the place. <laughs>